Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to configure Ether Channel. Before I explain what that is, let's first connect our wires. I'll be connecting Fast Ethernet 01 on Switch 1 to Fast Ethernet 01 on Switch 2. Then I'll do the same for Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 on both switches. So let me grab my wires and start the connection. You notice the port light starts blinking. This indicates that the switches are detecting the physical connection and beginning the negotiation process. Right now, STP Spanning Tree Protocol is checking the links to prevent loops. All right, let's do a quick IP interface brief command to make sure our interfaces are up. Okay, perfect. Before we configure anything, let's quickly go over Ether Channel and STP. Ether channel lets us bundle multiple physical links into a single logical link, increasing bandwidth and adding redundancy so if one link fails, traffic keeps flowing. Now, without spanning tree protocol, redundant links could create a broadcast storm where endless looping traffic can overload and shut down the entire network. STP prevents this by blocking extra links, but with Ether Channel, STP sees all bundled links as one, allowing them to stay active while still protecting the network. Before configuring Ether Channel, let's check the current spanning tree status. As you can see, this switch is the root bridge. That means it is the reference point for forwarding decisions in our STP topology. You'll also notice that F1 and F2 are designated ports. This means they are forwarding traffic. Okay, so now let's switch to switch 2. Okay, so now I'm in switch 2. You're about to see the host name change to switch 2. Now, let's check the spanning tree status. As you can see, Fast Ethernet 01 is the root port, meaning it's the preferred path to the root bridge. However, check this out. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 is being blocked. This is because STP has detected a potential loop, so it blocks one of the links to maintain a loop-free network. What we're going to do is bundle Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2 on both switches to act as a single logical link using Ether Channel. This means both links will work together, providing more bandwidth and redundancy, and STP will treat them as one link, so neither of them will be blocked. As you can see, there is no Ether Channel configuration yet. The output shows that there's no interfaces bundled together. Let's configure it and get these links working as a single channel. Now, let's enter configuration mode and create the port channel 1. The number one here represents the port channel interface number. You can think of it as the identifier for the ether channel. This is the logical interface that will represent the bundle of links we're about to create. Now let's run the show IP interface brief command to check our interfaces. As you can see, the port channel one has been created, but it's currently down. This is expected because we haven't finished configuring the actual links yet. Next, let's run the show ether channel summary command again. You can see here group 1 has been created, the port channel 1 has been added, but it's still down. This is because we haven't yet assigned any physical ports or configured the protocol for the ether channel. The next step is to add the physical interfaces and set the protocol to make the port channel active. The channel group command tells the switch to add this interface to an ether channel. The number one after the command refers to the port channel number, which we previously set to port channel one. This ensures that this interface is bundled into the correct port channel group. Okay, I'm going to use a question mark to see all the available options for the mode. We'll be using active mode, which means the switch will actively negotiate the ether channel using LACP. 
Just so you know, there's also PAGP, poor aggregation protocol, but we won't go into details about that today. It's another way to handle Ether channel, but for this setup, we're focusing on LACP. Passive is also an option for LACP. In passive mode, the switch will wait for the other side to initiate the negotiation. But in this setup, we're setting both sides to active to ensure both switches actively negotiate the Ether channel. Now that we set fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 to active mode, let's go ahead and apply the same configuration to fast Ethernet 0 slash 2. Now that we configure both Fast Ethernet 1 and Fast Ethernet 2, let's run the Show Ether Channel Summary command again. As you can see, both ports have been added to port channel 1. Notice the I next to F01, which stands for individual, indicating it's part of the Ether channel but still in the process of negotiation. The W next to the fast Ethernet 02 stands for waiting, meaning it's waiting for the other side to complete the negotiation before it fully comes online. Now, let's jump over to switch 1 again and configure the same settings. As you can see, we are now in switch one. While I configured the same settings here, it's important to understand something key about Ether Channel. For the bundle to work properly, both ends of the ports need to be configured exactly the same. This means the same protocol, the same mode, and the same channel group number. Why is this important? Well, if the setting don't match, the switches won't be able to negotiate the link properly and the Ether Channel won't come up. It's like trying to connect two devices with different languages they just won't understand each other so we'll be making sure both switches have the same configuration okay perfect so now we're adding the fast ethernet 01 interface first to the channel Now, I'm about to set the first link to active mode on switch 1. Check what happens. Give it a second. And there you go. The port channel is now up. You'll see that one of the links has successfully negotiated the LACP protocol. This means that fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 on switch 1 is now part of the port channel and actively communicating with switch 2. Let's finish configuring the other link to bond both links together. Once I press enter, the second link will start negotiating the LACP protocol with the other switch. After the negotiation, this port will also be added to the port channel and both links will be bound together as a single logical connection between the two switches. And there you have it. Now we just need to give it a minute while both links on switch 1 and switch 2 go through the STP process. We are waiting for both links to turn green, which indicate that spanning tree protocol is seeing these links as one single logical port. This process ensures that there's no loop in the network and the ether channel is fully operational. Let's give it a moment and let STP do its job. And it's a success. Both links have turned green. This means the ether channel is now fully established and operational. As you can see, no ports are being blocked by spanning tree protocol. Since STP sees the ether channels as one single logical link, it treats it as a single port. Let's confirm by running a show ethernet summary command. As you can see, the port channel is now in use and is using LACP for the negotiation. Both Fast Ethernet 01 and Fast Ethernet 02 are now showing P, which means they are successfully bundled together into one. 
Let's run the show spanning tree command to see how spanning tree protocol is handling these interfaces. Awesome, as you can see, STP is now showing one interface for the Ether channel instead of two individual ports. This confirms that STP is treating the Ether channel as a single link and is forwarding traffic through it. This is exactly what we want because it eliminates the possibility of network loops and ensures efficient data flow. And that wraps it up. In this video, we successfully configured a port channel interface and bundled two links together using LACP. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to help. I'll see you in the next one.